A few weeks back, I took on a long ride with Hank without any food. I wish I'd had the food and not Hank, but that's by the by. But I want to show you all what goes on in your body when you have such a poor nutrition strategy. And I think I can speak for us all when Connor ended up going slower than Dan without his e-bike. But, but it was a fair effort, Connor. Yeah, okay. true. I was going pretty slow. But today I want to show you all the opposite of that day. I want to show you what happens when you eat properly and that when you start a ride, your performance shouldn't change by the end. So today, myself and Mama are taking on a long ride. We're going to fuel correctly. I'm going to do a flat out effort at the start and finish to show you all just that. Okay, so we're just about to set off and Connor's already starting to take this way too seriously. He's just gone off to the cafe at 9 a.m. in the morning. Oh, wait, I'm gonna stop myself because last time I did this ride, Hank absolutely tortured me when I wasn't allowed to eat. So I was just gonna to head to the cafe and stock up on cake, but it's really not the best idea, to be honest, especially when you're about to head out on a big ride. So I do wanna do this properly in terms of performance and show you all how to do it correctly. So I'm gonna head back to Manon. Yeah. You came back. I came back. I got myself down from the cliff. Tried to do a wheel skid in there, but it didn't really work out. No. Anyway, you need to start carbo loading a few days before your big ride. Load up on those energy supplies, and then the day of, you want to have your usual breakfast or meal up to three hours before. Yeah, big feed before you start your ride, immediately before you start your ride. And you have this huge glucose spike and a sudden crash afterwards, which that's not really what you want when you're leaving yeah. for a long ride. And we have four hours Ooh. on the car today, man. I'm taking in one of my favorite bits of gravel that I've been oh, kind God. of looking at for a while. It's a Roman road, ancient road. I'm really excited to try it today. So it's going to be a laugh. But we do have a max effort up our favorite climb to begin with first. So up a climb. Up a climb, man. Come on, that's a bit. Let's get going. I did warn you. Fifteen minutes into the ride, myself and Manon have had a good warm-up and we're yep. raring to go because we have our first effort of the day up the infamous Banner Down climb to test our legs. I'm nervous as well yeah. actually, but we'll be repeating this at the end of the ride after we fuel properly throughout to show you that really our efforts shouldn't change too much after yes. four hours if we Hopefully. properly fuel. Three, two, one, go! Oh. Oh, oh. Manon's got a head start on me on the good clip in. Oh, I lapped it. Already? We're only 15 seconds in. I'm not a sprinter, Nanon. Not a sprinter. <laughs> okay, two minutes in. I'm actually feeling pretty good. 400 watt average so far. But the hardest part of this climb still to come. <sighs> And we're feeling fresh at the moment too. Having only just started the ride, it's gonna be really important to make sure to keep those glucose levels topped up, maintain the muscle glycogen we've been building up with all that carbo loading. <sighs> Onto the steep slopes of the climb. I'm not gonna lie, I have put in a good bit of training for this ride. I didn't tell Manon about it. So I'm hoping we're still friends at the end of this one. Oh, this is hurting. Nearly at the top now. See the finish line. No. Oh. Oh my word. You came out on. Just about. It's always longer than you think that time, yeah. isn't it? Oh so, my. Good effort though. What time did you manage? 8.42. Nice. And a power average of 283. Okay, sweet. Oh so God. I managed. Eight minutes and five seconds, Ooh, 380 or average. Nice. So that's the benchmark set, but we're going to repeat our effort at the end of the ride to see how our performance compares once we've fueled properly 
and hopefully match our times or at least get close in some respect. But first, we've got a nice ride to enjoy, including some gravel sections, which I know you're looking forward to, Connor. I've been talking about it ever since I joined GCN, and I'll finally get the opportunity to ride it. So Today's the day. I'm excited. We'll get going, shall we? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, just about recovered from that one, Manon. Just about, Connor. But now I think it's a good time to explain why it's so important to eat on the bike. Yeah, so glucose is our body's preferred source of energy, especially during endurance activities when we push the intensity of our efforts upwards of 65% of our VO2 max. That's our maximal oxygen capacity. Basically, how we feel when we're out of breath on our favorite climb, really. And in this state, our body can burn and use up carbohydrates when oxygen is in low supply. Glucose is stored as glycogen in the muscles and we have enough to last us about 90 to 120 minutes. That's why it's so important to keep those levels topped up by eating on the bike. You could go into your fat source and use that as energy, but that does require a lot more oxygen. Yeah, which is why when we run out of carbohydrates, our performance does tend to dip and we just don't have the same energy and we can't access those really high intensity levels that we're used to using during the rest of our ride. Okay, hour one is done, and both myself and Manon have consumed one bar, one large gel, one small gel, and two bottles filled with carb mix, all totaling 90 grams of carbs, the magic number. Yes, 90 grams is the amount you will need to consume every hour if you want to protect those glycogen stores and keep those glucose levels up. But it can be quite hard to know exactly what 90 grams looks like, which is why Enovit have created this app which we're going to use today, they'll show you what exactly you need to eat. Find the app using the link in the description below. Then go through and input your details. So for me, I'm a man, 90 kilos, two meters and four centimeters. I'm going to put advanced. Basically, this part determines your fitness level. Four hours riding time, training level three. You can find more information on what that means in the top corner right there. Then you have all the portions you should consume put into an hour by hour breakdown. Handy. Oh. <laughs> right, man on. <laughs> First section of the day. Oh no! <laughs> I did tell you I was gonna try and make this ride a bit epic. Oh. So they call this lane Pig Lane for the obvious um, reason, really. <laughs> we have had a bit of recent rain. Come on, man on. I'm coming. <laughs> big oh, hole. Hole. Quite oh, my the hole, madam. Oh, oh. Big hole. <laughs> Another hole. Hole. <laughs> I've got some mud stuck in my shoe and I can't clip into my pedal, so I'm having to have a little stop, get a little stick, and get the mud out. Thanks, Connor. Anyway, now, madam. We're oh. well into hour two. We're managing to keep on fueling. And now we're heading towards the Foss Way. That wasn't the Foss Way. No, that wasn't the Foss oh. Way. That was just a little warm up. Start of our little section of the Foss Way. Here we go. Okay, Manon, we've been riding for two and a half hours now. We've done 70 kilometers, about 30K to go. How are you feeling? I'm actually feeling really good, Connor. Yeah, it makes a difference eating properly. I'd say I'm not the best at eating on the bike. I definitely do not eat anywhere near as much, but yeah, I can definitely feel a difference today. Yeah, I'm feeling fine. I don't think any of us are good eaters, really. We do get no. caught up in the moment, don't Especially we? Especially when you're racing, you just yeah. forget, yeah. But when you really are regimented with it, it does make a difference. But anyway, now we're coming to the exciting part of the ride. The Foss Way, which is a a section I've been wanting to ride for ages. This is an ancient Roman road built in the first and second century AD. And it marked the, the Roman frontier, actually. So this was the Western frontier of the Roman Empire. Interesting. Mm. 370 kilometers long, Ooh. mostly in a straight line. There's some sections of road 
and also by way like this gravel sections which you can do on a gravel bike but today well we're doing it on road bikes because we can why not so should we get cracking yeah let's go i'm really excited it's like we're riding through history man I'm yeah brilliant. we are i just love riding through history did you uh take history for a level in school i didn't but I'm, I'm making up for it now oh. i'm making up for it now you definitely should have you've been so good wait I mean, look at this this is a road built in the first and second century AD, man. On. I know. Can you believe it, Connor? Nearly two thousand years old. Two thousand years old. That's older than Dan. Come on, then, man. On. Let's give it some welly. Fun little fact for you, man. On. It's yeah. called Foss Way because fossa actually means ditch. Ditch? In Latin, yeah. So when it was oh. first built, there was a ditch on one side of the road. Oh, fair. Do we have a sprinter? A sprinter? Yeah. Oh, God. Give me a minute. Uphill? Yeah, go on. No! Manon's <laughs> challenged me to a sprinter. Yeah, we've got a bit of height. Three, two, one. Oh. Right, Connor, we survived the gravel. We did. And that's our third hour done and another load of carbohydrates consumed. It is, but it is worth noting at this point that it's best to consume something little and often. You don't want a big portion of food that's gonna sit in your stomach, put a lot of pressure there, and also really kind of spike your blood glucose levels. You wanna try and keep them even. And also a good tip, actually, to avoid you know, forgetting to eat and cramming it all in set a little alarm in your head unit every 15 yeah, minutes. That's a good, good little tip there, Connor. It is. But now we're into our fourth hour and we're getting even closer to our final test at Bannerdown. We are, and I can tell you at this point in mine and Hank's ride when I wasn't eating, I was feeling pretty terrible, so. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that we're gonna smash this, Connor. Yeah, I'm feeling confident, yeah. I'm feeling good. Time for one last effort oh. on Bannerdown. Can't wait. Oh, okay, we're back at the bottom of Banner Down. And I tell you what, we're a bit nervous still, aren't we? Yeah, I am. But I am feeling a lot better than I did when I bonked with Hank. So I hope so. I feel confident. I think we can do this. I'm yeah. still interested to see how we'll go there, how yeah. our times will compare. I hope I didn't go off too fast in the last one. I know, that's what I'm thinking because yeah. I was excited and fresh. I know. Let's do All it, right. shall we? Moment of truth. Ready for it. Go on then. Okay. Three, two, one, go! Uh, uh oh. Oh, I got the clip in this okay. time. I think this first bit's the worst, you know. It is, it's the bottom of Banner Down is the worst. I can feel the legs, but still, I've got a lot more intensity. To be able to access the intensity at the end of a ride. When I was with Hank, I was literally doing all I could just to keep pedalling. Five and a half minutes in, rounding the final corner. Last push to the finish. I can see the finish. 100 meters to go. I'm gonna do it. Woo! Come on. Finish line is here. Ah, 100k later. Woo! Oh, feel good actually. Blasting my legs what I wanted. Gather my breath. See how I'm on set. Yes, man on.
Good effort. Oh my God. I'll give it a moment. Oh. I am so glad we fueled properly because that would have really hurt. I wouldn't have made it up no. if I didn't fuel. Oh, it's the same. When I was with Hank, I was just lightheaded, could barely spin the pedals. Yeah. Some difference. But like even at the end, like, I was suffering, but I could still put a decent power out. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You can yeah. just access those higher intensities. So yeah. on my second effort up at the end of the ride, I managed seven minutes, 45 seconds. Oh, you so are flying. I went a bit faster, Yeah, you actually. did. Wow. I, I think it was the fear of going slower after yeah. telling all the viewers that we were putting our money where our mouth was. Yeah, I did go a tiny bit slower, but only 8.44. Oh, nice one. Oh, so I think we... Uh, we set out what we came we to did, achieve. We did, yeah. Yeah. What a day. I know. But let us know in the comment section below how you like to eat when you're out on the bike. Do you manage to get all the food in that you need? Or do you think after watching this that maybe you should eat a little bit more when you're out on the bike? Do let us know in the comment section down below. Should we start for a coffee and a cake at the bottom? I think so. I think yeah, we've earned think, it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Although I don't need a kebab after this one. No, I, I, oh, I could not eat a kebab right now. I had three kebabs after the ride with Hank. Three? Yeah, I was very, very hungry. Now I feel... We could go for a little spin. Three? Three kebabs, yeah. That is good going. You should uh, enter like a eating Well, I did eat 44 Weetabix once when I was a kid. With milk or without? Bit of both. Come on, oh. we could talk about this all day. Oh. See you on the next video, everyone. <laughs>